Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is my channel, Sherelle Thinks, where I talk about all things health anxiety related. So apologies that I'm not uploading as frequently as I would like. Um, I am so, so, so busy with coaching um, through my Patreon and just busy with the kids and stuff. So it's been a little bit manic, but my goal for 2022 is to be consistent with like videos and make sure that I'm finding time to upload. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the health anxiety type, which is the checker. So I've done two previous videos, one being the Googler, one being the reassurance seeker. Um, and this one I'm going to be talking about if you have the check-in type of health anxiety. And as I said in other videos, you might not be exclusively like one type, like I was all four of them at one point. Um, and it, it seems to kind of change. Like I remember I was predominantly like a Googler. Then I went very like avoidant and was like scared of doctors when for like the longest time I was going like constantly. So the check-in part of health anxiety is the part that is the closest connected to OCD. So uh, people who have like the check-in type of health anxiety will excessively and obsessively check their body. So you might be constantly looking at moles um, you might be checking your bowel movements every time you go to the toilet um, you might be looking for signs of atrophy. You might be doing like strength tests and like putting your body through certain like exercises to see if there's anything wrong. Um, you might be checking your pulse all the time, taking your temperature, checking your blood pressure. The list goes on and on and on. Um, you know, you might be checking your boobs like several times a day. This was like really bad for me, especially when I was worried that I had ALS. I couldn't stop checking. Like, I, I mean, my phone at one point, if you would look through it, was just like photos of my tongue, photos of my calf muscles, photos of, oh my gosh, the amount of photos I had of my hands, because I like, can see by there, had like those lines and those lines, I don't know you can kind of see them there. Those lines literally plagued my life. I thought it was atrophy and I was twitching by there and my thumb, like it felt funny. So of course I thought it was atrophy. Um, and it can be really, really debilitating because you're constantly doing it. And then if you don't do it, you feel like you need to, because if you don't, you're going to miss something. And then the cycle continues. And then it gets to the point where it's literally taken over your life. Like I... Well, I remember when I thought I had breast cancer, I was literally checking my boobs. I mean, probably like every hour. And then I remember getting to a point of thinking, do you know what? Noth nothing's going to change. Like, <laughs> I, there's no point, like, you know, and it's really hard to, to, to get to that mentality because in the moment I was thinking, you know, no, I, I need to check, I need to check. And, and what would happen is the, the reassurance that I would get from checking was so short lived so I'd need to do it again to keep proving to myself that I was okay. This is very, very problematic. And this is the one safety behavior that can wreak havoc on our lives because all we want to do is check, 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 check. And it just fuels the fear even more because you're literally telling your brain, I've got to check because this is really scary. Like, you know, you know, so of course then your symptoms are not really going to go away. Um, and it just it just borders on to OCD, you know, it really, really does. It becomes completely obsessive. Um, you feel like you have to do it. Um, and it it's just it's just no good. So something, a little tip, um, if you are this kind of checking type and you're, you know, you really would like to kind of like rein it in and reduce it. A little tip that I did and, and still do, I mean I haven't used it in a while, but I, I I did lots, you know, when I was really bad is I would do a check. So for example, say I was worried about my boobs, right? I would I would check my boobs really thorough, make sure I've covered like every area. When I finished feeling reassured, I would get my phone out and I'd film myself, right? Or I would like voice record myself and I would say, I'd talk to myself, future self. So I'd be like, hi Sherelle, the date is so-and-so, so-and-so. 
um, we've just done a thorough check of your boobs. There's nothing there. Um, there's a little bit of what feels like fibrous tissue in the left breast. Um, and I'd go like into like so much detail, right? And then say like in two days time, I had that urge to check my boobs again. I would rewatch my video because in my mentality, if you can watch yourself back and see yourself reassured, and you can be like, well, two days ago, I was actually like super reassured. I can see it. I have the video evidence or I have like the voice recording. That was enough to get me to, to, to stop. And so I would just watch that voice recording back. Now, you know, anyway, some people might say, yeah, but you're just switching one thing for the other. Yeah, you are because you're still then needing to like watch something to calm you down. But it's better than checking yourself constantly. And, you know, you've got to kind of be like gentle with yourself. You know, recovery is 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 long. Um, so I, I find it really helpful. I, I also used to do it, you know, when I would go to like doctor's appointments because and there was a time where I'd come out of a doctor's appointment and because I was so anxious, I wouldn't like remember what they'd said. And I'd end up twisting things in my brain and thinking that they, they had said things that they didn't. So I, I would always keep evidence of like recordings of what the doctor said, recordings of myself, because then I had, you know, firm evidence that actually, Sherelle, you don't need to recheck this because you checked it a week ago, two weeks ago, and everything was fine. And your brain will try and talk you out of it. It'll be like, yeah, but like, what? Something's changed here. Yeah, but you, you weren't having pain in your armpit when you checked and blah, blah, blah. Your brain will do everything that it possibly can to try and get you to self-sabotage. But that's where you've got to remain strong and be like, no, we, you know, we checked. You're fine. You know, and I, I... I'm a big kind of like advocate for like a monthly check, right? I think that is sensible. I think it's reasonable. Um, so like I'll check my breasts once a month. I'll look at my moles. Um, some people might like to like check their, you know, check their lymph nodes, whatever. I don't really recommend that. I think with lymph nodes, you don't need to because if if a lymph node was swollen enough to be considered worrying you would see it like it would be sticking out of your neck you know it would be like you you wouldn't you just have to like dig for it it would be there so I don't check my lymph nodes but I do check my boobs and my moles um and and my my bowel movements once a month I'll I'll look and I'll check but other than that I don't anymore because I know that checking led me to <sighs> way more increased anxiety and more checking and more safety behaviors and it just honestly it doesn't help i know that in the moment you think that it helps and you're doing it to calm yourself down but long term it's making the health anxiety worse so you've got to challenge yourself and you can start with really small baby steps it can be like right i'm checking you know my hands for atrophy probably about 10 times a day i'm going to just limit it to once a day so in the morning i'm going to check my hands and then that's it and then and then challenge yourself again i'm going to do it every other day and then like once a week and you know, wean yourself off it. It's a very, very strong habit. And, you know, I mean, some people might like to go completely cold turkey and just stop checking. And um, I always say, fine, if you if, if that's what you want to do, but you will notice that your anxiety will massively increase for a little bit, like in the short term, because you're literally taking away this like addiction. Um, so there's like two kind of ways to do it. But um, definitely 100% the check-in needs to be minimized, it needs to be reduced because it does honestly make the fear cycle worse and worse and worse, which will make the symptoms worse, which will make everything worse in general. So we do need to break these safety behaviours. Um, I know how difficult they are. It's very, very hard. And I was, I mean, when I say I was bad, I mean, it was really, really bad. Like, like I said, I had like hundreds, maybe even thousands of photos on my phone of like various body parts and videos of like me walking around on tiptoes and like, oh my gosh, just insane you know just because i was so so obsessed and i couldn't stop so if you're going through this i just want you to know that like, i really do understand it's absolutely awful it's so tiring and debilitating and it's mentally and physically draining um so i hope that this video was helpful just to know that i've been there um it is very very common in the health anxiety world so you're definitely not on your own um, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, and, and as always, please pop below your own story in the comments. 
Um, if you want to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, you can do so by joining my Patreon, which will be in the link of this video. Um, I don't have many spaces left at the moment, and I'd love to open up more. And people have asked me, but I, I physically can't fit any more in in the day. I have my children all day, and then I'm working doing coaching in the evening and I, if I could have more hours in the day to fit more people in I definitely would but I just I can't at this point I have to have like a bit of me time as well um if you want to find me on Instagram where I post more health anxiety content you can do so um it's Sherelle Thinks exactly the same name as on here if you're looking for a Facebook support page you can join mine it's called the health anxiety community where you can meet you know like-minded individuals um and yeah that's all for me today guys i will be uploading the fourth one very soon i'm hoping to do it this week um so take care and i'll see you guys soon bye